What's up guys? So this horse I was helping a friend rehab and the worst part about getting bucked off there was because I was stupid. And so today's video is gonna be about how to rehab horses and not get bucked off. So I'm on the way to the doctor here and one thing that really good horsemen do, one trait that they have is they're very empathetic towards their horses. And so why rehabbing horses is dangerous is because being injured and not being able to do anything drives you insane. So I've been hurt now. I had my surgery two weeks ago, I'm going to the doctor now to have a checkup and it just sucks. It sucks not being able to exercise. It starts affecting you mentally, not exercising. And so we have to think of our horses this way. If we put them on stall rest, there's mental implications there that the horses start going crazy. And what happens is the vet always gives you, I always have this moment as a trainer, the vet hands you this piece of paper and they say, well, you need to increase the workload five minutes of tack walking each day. And then in the line kind of looks like this. Maybe that's backwards. Maybe it looks like this. So the line, maybe it looks like this. <laughs> I don't know. The line kind of starts low and increases and increases and increases. And the thing is that like you're just gradually increasing work. Now the problem with this in horsemanship is it doesn't work it, and the horses are crazy. And so if you have a four year old horse and you get this sheet that the vet hands you and says, have a fun time rehabbing your horse, it doesn't work for them. And so you either go to the route of drugging them to make it work, um, that you can w w tack walk them and not work them and be safe. Or there's another path and another chart that I kind of applied because I don't like to drug my horses in general. And as much as I can prevent drugging my horses, I have a little bit of a different plan as to the workload and the amount of groundwork I'm, I want to be able to do before I'm able to get on so that I can keep myself safe. So I'll show you that today. Everything's good at the doctor. They said no walking for four more weeks. That sucks. Really, dog? Come in. So here's the problem. The doctor or the vet, think primarily about the physical recovery. So the doctor thinks about my foot, like, okay, we need him to be off the foot entirely for six weeks. And it's the same with a the vet. They think, okay, this horse cannot trot for, you know, four months as the suspensor heals or whatever injury you have. And the problem with that is, is that as you get into the recovery mode, as that suspensory starts to heal and you start getting back into work, what you have to weigh is mental health versus physical health. So you have to balance the horse's mental state of mind um, along with your safety. And you have to factor that in to the rehab process. So let me grab my whiteboard. I don't know where it is. But let me grab that and I'll kind of chart out kind of some of my thinking on this. Okay, so let me say first that sometimes you get a horse that's totally fine. That's just an older horse and it's really well behaved and there's no issue with it having time off and behaving itself. But other times you get a horse that's a young horse or just doesn't do well with time off. And 
this kind of chart is specifically for these types of horses. So the vet will give you a plan and what they want is either after all of the rest that they've had, that they're not working. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna gradually and incrementally increase the work. You're gonna gradually increase the work um, up until you're all the way up here at full work. So full work is up here as time goes on. Now, the problem with this chart is if you're hand walking a horse and, and you can hand walk a lot of horses and get them to the point where all of a sudden you're ready to start riding them. But now the vet says, we don't want you to lunge it. We don't want you to do any small circles and you just need to get on and tack walk it because we need more weight on it. Now this is where when I've gotten rehabbing horses or I'm working with a vet, I push for my agenda, which is, look, I don't want to drug the horse if I can prevent it. And I want to stay, stay, stay safe at the same time. So where I'm going to deviate on this chart is I'm going to be hand walking it. And right here, as the vet says, okay, now it's time to start tack walking, I'm going to delay. And here I'm going to delay and continue hand walking, continue hand walking, continue that rehab process farther in time and continue to do everything I can there until I can jump to a certain level of work that I can either lunge the horse a little bit or do enough groundwork that I can stay safe. So this is exactly where I went wrong when I got bucked off is I, I really needed with that specific horse to be able to lunge it and get a little bit of movement going before I started into that trot work and canter work. So what I should have done is stalled here. Stalled here hand walking and stalled here um, long enough that I felt like that injury, whatever it was, had recovered enough that I could make the jump up here to enough work that I can feel safe. So either that I did enough groundwork there or enough work that I was like, okay, here I'm going to be safe when I get on. I feel like I've got the horse loose in the body. Walk, sometimes that means walk, trot, canter. Now the, th the difficult part with this is it, it's feel based. So it's not just this strict plan as, well, week 16, you're going to be walk like tack walking um, five minutes and week 17 you're gonna be walk tack walking uh, seven minutes and it's not like that you have to be able to feel your way through this and feel that one day with your horse you might not be tack walking and the next day he may be safe to do that but delaying a little bit on the side of introducing the tack walking um, until I can do enough groundwork um, to be able to get the horse mentally with me and I can be safe and I can prevent getting bucked off like I did here. So hopefully this is helpful and rehabbing horses is one of my absolute least favorite things to do, but you definitely have to balance those two factors, right? The health of the injury, gradually increasing the workload, but also keeping yourself safe that you're able to work the horse enough and get him to a mental state that you're going to be safe.